children and why you need to go to the dentist, even though we have a pandemic going. It's very important. We'll find out about that. Our guest is Dr. Nina Azaki uh, with uh, the Tribeca Dental Studio. They have 14 docs there. Wow. Of all kinds of specialties. Uh, Dr. Nina, welcome to Late Night Health. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I want to talk about the fear of dentists, okay? Uh, if you watch an old um, uh, cowboy show, a uh, Western from the 50s, uh, you see dentists, you know, occasionally in the, in the storyline, they have these big pliers and they go in and they're pulling out teeth. Uh, things have changed in 150 years, I'm assuming. And there are ways of, of saving the teeth for one, as well as dentists uh, have a lot more training today. Can you talk about why people are afraid of those big pliers that they have in their head? Absolutely. absolutely. I, I would like to think that less of my patients will be watching those movies. So we don't have to address those fears in my office. <laughs> patients do come in fearing the dentist and it is a real thing we can't really talk them out of it we just have to find a way for them to be comfortable with us uh, trust us and um, believe in us that we will do our best to get them from um, their I get I understand I mean here you know you're going to have somebody work in your mouth, um, maybe do a cleaning, maybe uh, fill a cavity, maybe tell you you have, you know, gum disease um, and you need to see a periodontist. There's a fear there. I mean, even going to a regular doctor, your blood pressure goes up. Yes, absolutely. Um, we... We see that in, in some patients, especially the ones that had bad experiences in other places. And um, we work through them, through those uh, fears and through the, their anxieties and through their uh, concerns. We understand and uh, communicate back to the patients, um, repeating what we've heard, how we understand your concern. We hear that you're afraid. We understand that your teeth are sensitive and we need to um, help you in the way that it's not invasive or not as invasive as they show in those movies. And uh, we, um, we try to help each individual uh, patient based on their fears. Um, we have parents that are bringing their little ones in and thankfully, the generations that we are upbringing are um, watching different movies and, uh, <laughs> and um, find it very uh, comforting coming here. And a lot of kids come and watch their older siblings get a cleaning or get a, a dental visit in. And um, while they're playing in, their, in our uh, playroom, meeting the doctors, meeting the staff without actually beginning to be a participant or being a patient. They feel comfortable coming in. They know what's happening from um, their siblings' older experience. And um, most of the time when the parents are comfortable and the siblings are comfortable, the young ones are very comfortable. And if they don't have siblings and they come in as their first experience, we make it, um, we make it very user-friendly for the parents and the children are more of a participant. They talk to the doctor. The doctor um, takes out a big toy. Um, we have a monkey with a big toothbrush. They go through their hygiene um, protocols at home with their parents and uh, the parents are comfortable. The kids love it and it becomes an interactive way. And that way we grow our non-fearful patients organically <laughs> and um, they become great patients as as they mature why did you know why did you decide to become a dentist what motivated you very funny story my sister was seven 
and I was 14. And we got into a fight and she had a first baby tooth that was falling out or the second one. And um, she ended up she ended up losing the tooth, losing the fight. And then I had to tell my mother that I would be a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> did you, and, and when she was in that fight, you were the older sister. Did you go and beat up the... Uh... She, I pushed her, she fell, the tooth was out, <laughs> blood, and uh, I, got, I got away with just saying, oh, I'm going to be a dentist. This is my first surgery. That's, uh, that's, and you did. Um, dentistry is uh, an interesting uh, health field because uh, other than the cosmetic side, dentists have over the years tried to put themselves out of business because if you do regular cleanings and floss and do all the right things, it seems to me that your, your visit to the dentist can be very short, quick, and painless, both physically and emotionally. I agree with that. However, I don't agree with the common prior about putting us out of business. Our practice uh -huh. focuses on preventative care rather than emergency services, even though we can provide and we do provide a lot of emergency care to most new patients that come to join our uh, practice. Uh, our patients are here for regular preventative visits. Um, if you find something small that needs to be addressed, it is addressed in a very timely manner before it becomes a bigger problem. We don't like to, you know, to wait for it to, to get into a, a serious uh, problem. So encouraging, uh, this, we're in the business of preventative care. I don't right. think out of business i think our business is changing and uh we can do great amazing things um we look um uh, we look at improving patients uh overall way standard of uh, living by um, looking at their airways helping them with snoring helping them with their sleep apnea um, focusing on some of the aesthetics using lasers as preventative periodontal maintenance care. It's just, I, I think dentistry is not taking itself out of business. I think we're thriving. That's great. I mean, but you, I was, I guess I was wrong in saying going out of business, but the general, the, the preventive aspect of dentistry is far ahead of most other uh, traditional health professionals. Yes, yes. And I, I pride our, our office on being in that, in, in that category. A lot of, you know, a lot of our patients are in the, in the mindset of visiting us every six months. Some of them visit every four months. The others we have to see every two months to maintain that optimal health level for that particular patient. So we do not look at a patient and their insurance. Oh, the insurance allows two times cleaning or one time cleaning a year. No, we actually look at what the patient needs. And I would love to see the patients twice a year for just regular checkups. This, right. this is, I mean, and if they're in the mindset of, of maintaining that type of visit, they continuously return and we thrive on our hygiene program. The last couple of years with the with the pandemic, a lot of people put all kinds of health care behind them. They didn't want to to uh, to be exposed to any kind of potential COVID outbreak, if you will. Uh, you being in New York City and Tribeca, uh, you know, we keep hearing about all the the, the terrible uh, outbreaks that are that are there has that affected patients in not getting continuous dental care? Absolutely. We did have a big break. We were not considered um, essential businesses and we were closed down for preventative and regular care. We were allowed to provide emergency care. 
and being uh, being a preventative type of practice we didn't have much of emergency care. So I had to advertise heavily to get that inflow of emergency patients in. And we did help a bunch of patients that were left without a dental office that were closed down for the pandemic. Um, all of, I, I would say all but five maybe that were treated by us during the pandemic closed down uh, were new patients to the practice. We were open four days a week, and uh, one doctor was seeing patients for four days, the uh, full days, and she was busy with that. But uh, very proud to say, almost all of them were new patients. That's uh, that's really good. Um, people who are watching us now, who are still concerned about going into a dental office, whether it's yours or somebody in Wisconsin, Chicago, here in the Southern California area, should they be concerned? Or do you think that, believe that most dentists, including you at Tribeca, that, you know, you're taking extraordinary uh, care to prevent the spread of COVID? Yes, we do have a lot of precautions set in place. I think most dental offices, are um, exercising those uh, those precautions. It was very important for us to keep our staff safe as, as well as the patients. So I, I think in Tribeca we are we're not seeing so much fear. Um, if if anyone is not coming in, it's because they have been exposed or they're waiting to see on their testing status. Um, they're very aware of what to expect and how to handle it. I, you know, we tried to confirm everyone on the phone and to see if anyone is, uh, you know, displaying any symptoms and ask them. And, and uh, what about kids? Now you talked about comforting kids, but the parents need to be comforted as well, right? They bring in a three-year-old for her first or his first dental exam. Uh, that uh, can be traumatic. You got, you know, here's a strange person sticking their fingers into your mouth. Yes, yes. And some of those parents become patients later on because they love the way that our pediatric, pediatric uh, team is treating their children and them. Um, some of the parents call us because the baby is learning to walk and tumbled and fell and that becomes their first emergency visit to us and they are grateful and um, in the way that we're handling it and they bring them back for regular checkups and, and visits. And coming back to the dentist because you know the one week nobody really knows what's happening with COVID. Uh, the, the scientists don't know, nobody knows right it's, and it must be frustrating for you but what do you what can patients expect anticipate coming back to the dentist in 2022 well a lot of patients did take a long break from uh, from any medical care like you said and from the dental care so they're coming in and uh, perhaps getting a little bit more than just a maintenance cleaning mm -hmm. some have a couple of cavities and some of them have the deep cleaning that they need to address. Uh, but uh, for the most part, it, we're back, we're back, back to normal. I, I feel like we're, we're definitely, if not yet back to normal, then we're very, very close to being back to normal. Let's talk about maintaining a healthy smile and uh, dental uh, uh, you know, a, a healthy mouth. Okay. Uh, let's start with diet. I mean, sugary drinks, sodas, sugary drinks, sodas, uh, acidic drinks, lemons. Some people think that they're being healthy by drinking water with lemon and it is healthy for the overall part, but if they don't rinse their mouth, it softens the enamel and allows, um, cavities to progress a little bit faster. So of course it's all connected. And what and, about what about the food? Any any foods that we should avoid? 
sticky food. We tell the children to avoid sticky food, which we think could be healthy, like raisins. Um, they stay longer on their, in, you know, in the grooves, in the back grooves, especially with kids where they don't brush sometimes as often as we would like them to. And um, so those type of uh, chewy and sticky foods uh, we, uh, we want to stay away from, or uh, we want to remind them to brush better when they do eat those. And what about chewing gum? Um, I, I know that uh, I'm throwing that out at you. Uh, I chew gum for 12 seconds and spit it out. I, I just, that's, it's weird, but that's what I do. Um, is chewing gum a, a okay or not okay? So a lot of healthy, cautious, and uh, health awareness patients, they do chew gum. Uh, however, they stick to the sugar-free gum, which is a little bit better than the regular sugar gum. Um, some kids some kids get um, what we call sealants, which is a protective layer over their grooves in the back to protect them from getting cavities. If they chew crunchy things on those, on those uh, sealants, they may get little uh, breakage and the bacteria start sipping in. So gum is a great alternative but to, to the crunchy things that they could chew other than gum. Um, some gums stick to dental work and some gums don't. I think it's a, it's a personal preference. I, uh, I can remember trying to chew gum when I had braces as a kid. Big mistake. Yes. Extra trip to the orthodontist, right? Um, in, um, in our last couple of moments, um, I always look at people, I look at two things when I meet people, okay? One is their eyes and the other is their mouth, their smile. The smile is really an important aspect. It's, it's like a, a window into, into the, 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 the soul of a person. When I agree. You, yeah. I absolutely agree. During the pandemic, we had a lot, a big influx of, influx of patients uh, coming in for orthodontic work because they felt that the wearing a uh, mask will protect them from getting, uh, you know, uh, judged if they have braces or Invisalign, that's something noticeable. So they took that, that took that time as an advantage of uh, going in and, and straightening their mouth, their teeth and, and malocclusion. And, um, um, they are done by now. Wow. So it was a good time to, to do that cosmetic work. It, it, and orthodontics, uh, orthodontics is not only for cosmetic reasons, but it also helps align the mouth for proper chewing, right? Correct. And now we have this new branch in dentistry. It's called airway orthodontics or airway dentistry, where the doctors are concerned and, uh, addressing the air, air, airway uh, obstructions by um, expansion of the jaws, the maxilla and the mandible, and giving the patient a little bit more room for the air so the tongue doesn't compete uh, for the airspace and uh, help them breathe better, become better athletes, um, be, feel more rested, getting more oxygen into every cell of their body, prolonging their lifestyle. Uh, life lifespan. It's 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 quite amazing at the new uh, way we look at uh, at things and the patient as a whole. And uh, it would seem to me that um, that with that it would also help with things like sleep apnea, as as you just said, right? Yeah. Um, last thing, give me one, maybe two tips to have a bright white smile. Everybody wants white teeth. I would say, ask your doctor. <laughs> and I, I can't really give advice on particular things depending on the patient. I don't want them taking it home and, and, and trying to do something that uh, perhaps the doctor should take a look at. How do you feel about the, the whitening stuff that's out there? I. Uh, uh, I got a sample of something a couple of years ago, and I put it on my put it on a in a tray, um, 
and it was so strong. It I it was in my head, my mouth for maybe ten seconds. And as people watching the show know, I'm a I'm a baby, you know, low pain tolerance. But it was really strong stuff, and and I was afraid it would could ruin the enamel. So the enamel wouldn't be ruined. Oh, very very sensitive. So I know exactly what you're saying. Um, I, it was it was a long process for us to find the right whitening um, experience for the patient because I was the first patient, of course, to be tried on. Uh, and being very, very sensitive. It took a lot of tries for different things and a lot of them were rejected by me. So the whitening that um, needs to be done. So we have desensitizing treatments that we do before the whitening. And the way the whitening works uh, doesn't affect the enamel. We, you have to think of the enamel as uh, skin with pores enamel has pores mm -hmm. and what happens throughout the day is when we eat colorful foods and drink coffee or tea or juices um, or just eat fruits the food coloring gets inside those pores and it stays there some of those can be whitened with toothpaste and just regular use of the whitening toothpaste and if the stains have been there for a very long time, we actually need something that goes inside those pores and whitens from within. Um, those pores from the enamel, from the outside of the enamel, they go all the way to the nerve ending and they narrow down to very, very tiny tubes. And the saliva is there all the time. When we put, it, when we put gel inside those tubes, it becomes a little bit more viscous and um, the nerve sense the difference in viscosity from the saliva to the gel. And the only thing that it interprets it, interprets it is, is, is pain. You can't say, oh, it's a little bit more viscous and, or it's a little hot or a little cold. So that, but until the gel leaks out from the, from the tubules, it, you will have little zings that the nerve will feel. Um, there, there is something that we put inside the, uh, the, you know, on top of the enamel before we whiten and that gel desensitizes the nerve. So it makes it much, much more bearable. Sign me up. I'm, a, I'm sensitive too and a big baby. Dr. Nina, thank you very much. We, uh, we invite you if you're in the New York area or a lot of people like to, to come in to see Dr. Nina and her staff and uh, you can find out more information by going to our website, which we've had up throughout our, our interview. Uh, I really appreciate your time. What a, you know, a great smile. Thank you. A, a great smile for a dentist has to have a great smile. Um, thank you very much. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. Uh, I'm Mark Allen and this is late night health.